some instances, we're going to have to solve what are called radical equations. And uh, if you notice, we can see all of these radical symbols through these problems here. In each of these problems, the variable that we want to solve is inside one of these roots. And when you're trying to get it, uh, the letter by itself, which is our goal anytime that we have a an equation is we want to isolate that variable and figure out what number we could represent there that would make this equation true. Um, in, a, in any of these problems where the x is inside, we're going to have to get it out of that um, root symbol in order to solve it. Uh, right now, here with problem number five, we have a fairly simple equation. Notice that the x is inside the square root, and other than that, the x is by itself. So that's really good. The only thing that we have to do is actually get rid of the square root symbol. In order to do that, just like any time that we're working with an equation, we always want to do the opposite or inverse operation. So the inverse operation or opposite operation of taking a square root of something is to square something. So our method that we're going to use here, if we have a problem like this and we want to get the x out of the square root, what we can do is square both sides. Now, on the left, the square and the square root are, in, are serving opposite or inverse functions, and they undo each other, leaving you just with the x behind. On the other side of the equation, because remember, if you do something to one side, you have to do it to both sides. On the other side of the equation, we have the 9 squared, and 9 times 9 is 81. And so we get this as a solution. Now, and that, that really is all there is to it. When you have a radical equation, we want to undo the radical. by using an appropriate power. So square root, we're going to square both sides. If we have a cubed root, you'd cube both sides or take both sides to the third power instead. So that really is the basics here in terms of what we have to do. The last thing that you need to do is you want to check your solution. That's always a good idea anyway. But you want to check to see if your solution works in the original problem. Okay, so let's see how that would work. If we go back and we take our 81, if we go back to the original problem, the square root of 81 is 9. Sounds good. That actually works because 9 times 9 gives me 81. And I have a solution. Uh, why is this process of checking the original problem to see if it works so important? Let's take a peek here in problem six. Here, we want to get the x by itself, and right now, all that's with it is a square root. So to get rid of the square root on each side, what we're going to do is square both sides, because the square and the square root are inverse functions that will undo each other. On the left, they undo each other and leave me just with what was inside, and that's x. On the right, I do negative 3 squared, and remember negative 3 times negative 3 is a positive 9. And so when I solve, I was able to get x equals 9 using my solution process. Um, however, if we go back to the original equation here and we plug in x equals 9, you'll notice something interesting happens. Here I have the square root of, instead of x I have 9. But when I take the square root of 9, I just get 3, and 3 is not equal to negative 3. So in this case, I found a solution, but my solution doesn't actually work. So in this case, we would say that there's no solution. The process of undoing our radical by squaring both sides, the reason that we have a problem here is it introduces the possibility of what we call extraneous roots. Sometimes we get extra solutions. Sometimes we get extra solutions that don't actually work in the problem when we do this process. There's no other way to do it. This process, if there's an answer, this process finds it, but sometimes it finds extra things too. So in, this, in these cases, and any time that you see a radical equation, um, you need to remember that our process does introduce the possibility of, of extra roots that don't actually work, and you should go back and always check your answers and make sure that they're valid. With that in mind, let's just do a few more examples. This time we want to get the x by itself again. 
notice that there's two things going on in this problem. Right now, the x is inside the square root, which is a problem, and the 4 is also being added. We have to get rid of both of those things in order for the x to be all the way by itself. Does it matter which way you get rid of them? Absolutely. Right now, we use that same process uh, of whatever is kind of the farthest away in order to get this to work. You cannot subtract 4 right now. Um, because the 4 is trapped inside the square root as well. So we need to get rid of the square root before we can do anything else in this particular problem. So here we have the square root of x plus 4 equals 8. The square root is the farthest away function because the 4 is tied up closer with it inside. So I'm going to square both sides right now. Here the square and the square root undo each other and just leave me with what was inside. So now I have just x plus 4, no more radical. On the other side, I have six, or 8 squared. 8 times 8 is 64. I still want to get the x by itself. There's still a number that's associated with it, so we're going to undo the plus 4 by subtracting 4 from each side. And I end up with x equals 60 as a potential solution. Then, don't forget, always go back to the original problem and check to see if it works. In this case, the square root of 60 plus 4, we do what's inside first is 64. The square root of 64 is 8. That works great. So x equals 60 is a viable solution. If there was one, it's the only one, and it does actually work. Um, if we go to a problem like number 8 here, notice that we have x, um, the x is inside a cubed root. So we're going to have to deal with a cubed root instead of a square root. And we'll talk about how to do that. There is a 1 and there's also a 10. All of those things need to go away. Remember, your goal is to get that x by itself. So we're going to have to deal with the cubed root, the 5, the 1, and the 10, and get rid of all of those things in order to get the x by itself. Again, it does certainly matter which order you get rid of things. Right now, the 1 and the 5 are trapped inside the cubed root. So we've got to deal with all of those. And the 10 is outside farthest away of all. So we're going to get rid of that 10 first. In this case, I'm going to minus 10 from both sides. That's going to leave me with the cubed root of 5x plus 1. And on the other side, 5 minus 10 is going to give me a negative 5. I'm going to scroll down and give us a little bit more room here. All right. Now, I still want to get the x by itself. The 1 and the 5 are trapped inside the cubed root. So the cubed root is the farthest away thing. To get rid of a cubed root, what we want to do is take it to the third power this time. Square roots kind of have a little invisible 2 on them. A cubed root, we have to take to the third power to undo that. Here, a cubed root and a cube undo each other and just leave me behind with what was inside. So I have 5x plus 1. And on the other side, I have to do negative 5 to the third power. Negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25 times another negative 5 gets me negative 125. Still want to get the x by itself. Looking way better, though. We've gotten rid of a lot of things. We still need to get rid of the 5 and the 1. Uh, the 5 is being multiplied, so that lasts longer. It's closer um, in our order of operations. So we need to get rid of a plus 1, and we do that by subtracting 1 from each side. Here I have 5x left on the left, and on the right I have negative 1, 25 minus 1, which is negative 126. In order to finish the problem, I want to get the x by itself. It's being multiplied by 5, so I'm going to divide by 5 on each side. 5s are going to cancel, and I'm left with negative 126 fifths. This will not reduce. You can leave your answer just like that. Uh, we do want to double check here to see if this actually works. Um, so let's go ahead and do that before we accept this as our final answer. Here we have the cubed root of 5 times negative 126 fifths plus 1 plus 10. And we're hoping that that's equal to 5. So let's see. Here I've got the cubed root of the 5's cancel out here. I have a negative 126 plus 1, which is negative 125. We can take the cubed root of negative 125. Um, we can't take the cube, we can't take a negative root of an even power, but an odd power is fine because we can do negative 5 times negative 5 times negative 5 to get negative 125. And if we add 10 to that, we do in fact end up with 5 as a solution. So that does totally work. Um, and that would be my answer for that problem. Uh, for number 9, same deal. 
This time we want to, our goal as always, get that x by itself. There's a 3 and a radical and a 1 going on. Now this time, notice that only the x is inside the root. So that square root is the last thing that's going to happen, or the last thing that's going to hold on. It's going to hold on for the longest amount of time as I go through my problem. Um, the 1 needs to move and the 3 needs to move, but because those are outside the square roots, this time we're going to get rid of the 1 and the 3 first. Um, adding and subtracting stuff is the farthest away mathematically, the weakest link in PEMDAS, so we're going to start with that. We're going to subtract 1 from each side. That leaves me with 3 times the square root of x. Now notice this one is a big 3, so it's 3 times the square root of x, where this one was a little 3 up at the top, which meant it was a cubed root. Those mean totally different things. Over here, so we have 3 times the square root of x left here, and over on the right-hand side, 5 minus 1 is 4. All right, now I want to get the x by itself. There's a radical and a 3. The 3 is outside and, farther, and therefore farther away. It's 3 times by this, so I'm going to divide by 3 on each side to get rid of them. That gives me the square root of x is equal to 4 thirds. And now I need to get rid of the radical. So to undo something that's being taken the square root of, we're going to square both sides. The square and the square root undo each other and leave me just with x. And on the right hand side, 4 squared is 16 and 3 squared is 9. And I end up with x equals 16 ninths as a, as a possible solution. Again, great idea to double check your work here. 3 times the square root of 16 ninths plus 1 hopefully is going to be equal to 5. Let's see. The square root of 16 ninths is 4 thirds. 4 thirds times 3, again you can kind of think of it like this, gives us 4 plus 1, which does in fact equal 5. So this is not an extraneous solution, it actually works and would be our solution for this particular problem.